to encouragement with us that um, the God that we serve is a God who has everything planned out. Our God is never taken by surprise. He really has us on his heart. Whatever he has said concerning you, he will make sure that it comes to pass. Sometimes it might look as if there is no way it will come to pass. It might look as if um, it's actually over or maybe God actually does not have a plan. But I want to encourage us that let's keep on trusting him. At the right time, God will show up and he will do it in a way that is going to be so beautiful that we are going to even be surprised. So this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever you are, I want to encourage you to continue to trust in God and hold on to him. And he will surely do whatever that he has promised in your life. He will surely do it. And um, I want to encourage us with the story of Abraham. We all know the story of um, Abraham and Sarah. It got to a time that um, probably Abraham thought, okay, maybe this thing God has said is not going to happen through Sarah. So I can, I can actually hear to Sarah's advice to go for Hagar. But later God told him that, no, it's not through Ishmael. It's actually going to be through the son that Sarah is going to bear. So let us never give hope. Let's continue to trust God and God will um, take us through to the end. Amen. And we have any testimonies Amen. 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 God bless you. Is this song on my heart? Elohim, ancient of days, rain, rain, for there is none like you, God, ancient of days, rain, rain, for there is none like you, God, ancient of days, rain, rain, for you are God, Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. That was very powerful. God bless you so much, Sister Vera. We thank God that God is God and he's reigning in our lives. So um, by God's grace, it's gotten to time that we, we go to our main agenda for today. And I want to call on Sister Vera to uh, make us the honor of introducing today's speaker to us. Thank you. We thank God for today, and I'm excited and really happy to introduce our speaker for today. As our speaker is in the person of Mrs. Dickness Ama Zewan Ponsa. She's really an anointed international motivational speaker for conferences, for retreats, conventions, and couples getaway meeting for over the past 30 years. And mommy, your audience are ready to receive you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. 
We bow and we worship you. I bring you greetings from Atlanta, USA. The today's topic is the cost of parenting. And then I guess for the 21st century. It's a very interesting topic. I say very interesting because we as Christians belong to Jesus' sanctuary. Hallelujah. Amen. Not only do we belong to Jesus in this generation, not only in this age, but the next to come. We are the Jesus generation. Amen. Our sanctuary is just as Jesus is. Hebrews 13 it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We are the same yesterday, today, and forever with the century where we belong to. Because our constitution is the Bible. The I'm Bible does not change with the times. The word of God, the Bible, is our manual, it's our constitution. It doesn't matter how the world changes. It doesn't matter how science and the world moves. We remain the same because our constitution does not change. Our kingdom belongs to God. And our kingdom's king is Jesus Christ, the Almighty. We know that the world is trying to run away from God. And somehow it is infiltrating the church, little by little, there are certain things we look at the world do, and somehow in the surface, it looks so good, and we want to do that. But we know that God will not change for the world. We have to change for God. Hallelujah. The word of God is his integrity. And he has decreed and declared. Jesus said, Matthew 24, 35, Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will by no means pass away. Everything that we already have in Jesus, we have so much in Jesus that we ought to be able to win the world towards what we're on with is that what we have in the world new, they will do whatever they can to have it. Because you see, we don't acknowledge what we have. I don't think we, 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 we take the word of God as he is. The word of God is spirit, is life. It is powerful, the most powerful force in the whole universe is the word of God. And the Lord God is telling us in Ephesians 2, 6, that we are seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. We have been elevated above angels. We are seated with Christ. What can the world offer us? That is so wonderful that we have to take a cue from. The whole God is living inside us. 
I want us to write down these scriptures because we don't have time. Matthew 24, 35, Psalm 119, 89, Isaiah 55, 11, John 6, 65, Hebrews 4, 12. 1 John 4, 17. We are citizens of Jesus Christ. So being a mom to us who are redeemed by the Lord, it's a calling. It's a holy calling. It's a ministry unto the Lord. It's precious unto the Lord. You are taking care of the child on behalf of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And guess what? God has given us. He has sent his own spirit, the spirit that created the heavens and the earth, to come and abide in us, to help us do everything on this earth. But you see, the mind. Do you really believe the word of God? Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man or a woman thinketh, so is he. You can never get above what you think. You can never prosper above what you think. You can never do above what you think. So what is your thinking? If your mind is not stayed on the Lord, Isaiah 26, 3 says, he will keep us in perfect peace because our mind is stayed on him and we trust him. He will keep us in perfect peace. What is your mind? Are you walking with the blueprint, the Bible? As a man in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are far, far above the 21st century man. We are far, far above because you see, they don't want to get involved with God and go by the principles of how we raise children. They want to do that, the child don't want to do that. Okay, he, she says one, the child said that time. Some people even can hit their mother, insult their mother. What they want is what they do. They don't have respect for their mothers. Their mothers are afraid of them. They don't want to make them angry. No, that's not what God called us to do. They have challenges of the fear of the times. That is the 21st century man. They fear and they have failure to impart moral values to their children. They have imbalanced lives. They have lack of emotional bonding. I've always said that when you don't have Jesus Christ, actually, if you don't have Jesus, you have nothing. You can't be wise without Jesus. You can't be strong without Jesus. You can't be overcomer without Jesus. You can't be powerful without Jesus. So when you don't have Jesus, the world for the 21st century man is very, very scary. Because they have the social media technology now, but there is a way and there is the truth and there is the light and there is the life that is through Christ Jesus. We cannot live in this century and be like the 21st century woman. Because you see, the true spiritual situation is that we are in the 21st century, but we are not of the 21st century. Because this world has another world. 
there's the, the world that belongs to the world, and there's another world that belongs to the devil, but our world belongs to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is the king of our world. In our world, the Holy Spirit gives us love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness. He gives us faith. Galatians 5.22, he gives us wisdom and strength. When we call upon him, he hears us, he answers us, and he delivers us from all our troubles. So, the idea is that we have to be aware of the philosophy of the world the traditions of the world, the traditions of deception. You see, philosophy is a system of thoughts, approach towards life, study of life, your outlook towards life, a way of thinking, a paradigm, a worldview. But I will today say that as Christian moms and grandmothers, we should have this idea of putting in place the philosophy of our Christian values. Because if we don't create our own philosophy based on the word of God, Satan will use the world view, the world's philosophy to steal, to kill and destroy. Philosophy of the world will spoil you with lies, with deception, with craftiness. It will really destroy that which God has gifted you. You will feel helpless. You will be overwhelmed because you see, what does the Bible say? Our help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. If you deviate from the word of God, you will surely have the wrong approach to the life of how to raise your children, and you will fail your children miserably. Even those of I'm a grandmother now, I raised my children seriously in the law. But after they go to college, the challenges, can you imagine if even you had done nothing at all? The challenges that they faced, the questions that came up. So you cannot afford, do your own, do your best. We cannot take from the world. The world has nothing to offer us. They give us technology, we will take it and use it in a godly way. They give us the media, we will use it and use you see, today we are here because of the technology. But what are we doing? We are discussing Jesus Christ, who is our life and our strength and our victory. So we cannot cast away our blueprint, our manual, our citizenship, the word of God should have full impact in how we raise our children. It should have full impact in their skills. The Holy Spirit, you sleep and the Holy Spirit will tell you that, 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 that. You get up, you do it, and it is exactly that. He is faithful. He will never leave us or forsake us. We can never get it wrong when we have Jesus abiding in us. We should resist the worldview and embrace our Christian ideals 
and go by the word of God and not by signs or whatever the world has, they are taunting and showing us. Because the word of God, like I said before, is the most powerful force in the whole universe. Science cannot comprehend the word of God. And we should not kid ourselves. The number one goal of the devil from the beginning of time was to still kill and destroy our faith in God. If he's able to steal our faith, then we have nothing. If we throw up our hands and say, wow, it's difficult. If we allow our children to overcome us and say, mommy, look at this, look at this. You are too, you are too, prefer you are this. No, we stand on the basis of the word. And we should do as we preach. We cannot tell our children that, 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 and then we are doing something else. We cannot lie to our children. We cannot insult people to our children. We cannot steal. Our children know we work here, here. We come home and we come with the beef. We come with the this. They are seeing us and we are teaching them to love the Lord. We should take our ministry very seriously. If the devil is able to kill our faith, to steal from us, because we throw up our hands and we think it's difficult to walk this Christian walk, then we will cut off communication because you see, without faith, we cannot communicate with God. And when you are last time, my husband uh, is going to be about three years, I lost my wonderful husband, the best man on the planet, a man over 40 something years, never insulted me, never was wicked to me. He never turned his back on me. He, everything he did was to bless me and my children. I lost him. And because I knew the word, if I did not know Jesus, I confess to you, I don't know what would have happened to me. I would have thrown up my hands and said, honey, let me go with you because what am I going to do? But he did his work. He walked with God step by step. He knew where he was going and he was glad that he was going to meet his maker. Because he was a good husband, a good father, a good grandfather. He wasn't afraid that he was going to uh, face his maker. He knew that his work has gone before him. It is very, very serious. Our work with God. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. So that's, we cannot have faith on this side. We know how some scriptures, we love certain scriptures and we don't like certain scriptures. We can't do that. All scripture is spirit and is life. God does not react to our pain, to our tears, to our prayers, to our fasting, to our offering, to our tithes, unless it's mixed with faith. So when you do contrary, to what God has asked you to do. You can give offering on behalf of your children in place of teaching him how to walk with Jesus. You can fast in place of how you should raise your children. You can give offering on their behalf, mix with you training them the way they should go. You have, these are some of the ideas I will give you. Love your husband, love your spouse, the way God loves you. Your marriage to your children is the greatest witness before 
your children, your marriage, they are watching. Are you insulting your husband in front of them? Are you talking about him behind his back wickedly? Are you gossiping with your, your girlfriends and your children are hearing that you're insulting their father? If you do that, you have to stop. Because like I said, you are on a mission. You are a steward for Jesus Christ. The children are not yours. He has given you respect and honor to raise those children for him, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. You cannot do it haphazardly. You have to do it in spirit and in truth. You have to do it prayerfully. You have to get up every day and say, Lord God, here we go again. I depend upon your wisdom. I embrace your kindness. I embrace your direction. It is serious. You have to give your husband grace. Give each other grace. Because Lord Jesus Christ gave us his grace with his very own blood. Don't be wicked to each other. You have a job to do. You have a job bigger than your insults. You have a job to do to raise your children. Apologize to your child when you know you are wrong. Don't feel too, when you are wrong, you are wrong. You think they are smart, they don't know. They are mind, they know. They are very intelligent. If you tell them to say sorry when they go around you, you don't say sorry. Where are they learning from? Apologize no matter what age. If you know you are the wrong, oh wow. Kofi, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's wrong, I'm sorry. Please, will you forgive me? You have to be able to humble yourself, to apologize when apology is needed. You are working for a master. You are working for the king of kings and the lord of lords. And don't you forget that as Jesus says, so are you in this world. First John 4, 17. You are his ambassador. So obi pe Yesu Christo hu a wo na wa se ye hwe anya gro na me som anya gro eni da fom i was so obi to me show ajua i was so obi to me show akwashia i was so obi to me show ama afia i was so obi to me show ya no ka se Yesu ni o Yesu ni somebody must look at you and testify that this is indeed Jesus Hallelujah. You cannot, you cannot do your work haphazardly. You are a mom for Jesus. Raising somebody's future husband, somebody's future wife, allow the Holy Spirit to help you and do it well because we will account for them before the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. You should not withhold correction from the children. Proverbs 30, 24. You should not. When they are wrong, up to now, my children have grown up. I have grandchildren. If you ask my children, I say it like it is. They have grown. They have their own family. I have no business. But I can't help myself. When it is wrong, it is wrong. Because if you do not tell them who are, if your children don't listen to you, they will listen to anybody. It doesn't matter whether the president of the country. If your children don't respect you, they will never respect anything. You ladies are younger. Make sure that you have that bond with your children. That you have that respect. 
ask God every day to give you favor before your children. Lord, give me favor before my children. You need favor. You need favor. Because if you don't do it right now, and your daughter marries the wrong person, or your son marries the wrong person, then you are done. Because they don't respect you, they will never respect anybody. You can never talk into their life. You can never advise them because you've lost that respect. You should not let this happen. You are younger. Begin to seriously have that bond, pray with your children, respect them, let them respect you, correct them when they are wrong, be firm when you have to, when you have to enjoy each other, enjoy, but do not give a blind eye to wickedness in their life. Do not cross over things that you know God hates. You should hate what God hates and you should love what God loves because you are raising somebody's wife, somebody's husband. In the future, somebody's grandfather, grandmother. How well are you doing it? The Holy Spirit will help you with all things. John 14, 26 says, the spirit of God will teach you all things. We lack nothing as Christians. We lack nothing. He's not telling he will teach us some things. He said he will teach us all things. All things, not some things. Everything we need to know, the Lord Holy Spirit will teach us. Hallelujah. So the Lord God Almighty it's good. You know that God doesn't play with when he gives people a sermon. We all know the parable of the talent. Mm. I want us to remember that. Your child or your children are the talent God has given you. So God has given you the title, a mother or a mom. It's a title. It wasn't given to you because you had children. God gave it to you. Motherhood is ordained from heaven. It's God's title is giving you. And when God gives you the long life he has promised you and he has promised us long life, you'll be a grandparent. It's a title. Listen. Be aware and do your due diligence to raise these children the way they should go, the way they should go, the way they should go and grow so that when they have grown, they will not depart. It's a calling with God's anointing upon it and you must do it well. You must move with wisdom. You must have foresight because what did the Lord do with the servants, the three servants, who, the last one, who went and dug and put his talent some feet under the ground? We don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. The Lord has given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places through Jesus Christ. We should be able, we should be able to accomplish this work. And don't look at the world. We are citizens of the country of Jesus Christ. We are in the world, but we are not living for the world. We have to be a candle light, shining. We have to be a star, shining for all to see. We have 
not to fear the devil. Sometimes we are afraid of the devil. He has no power like that. Greater is he, 1 John 4, 4, is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We have overcome him. You have to embrace your salvation. It includes liberty. It includes healing. It includes walking in victory, not some days, every day. Jesus is every day Jesus. So I will share with you the idea for the 21st century citizens of Jesus Christ that your Lord Jesus has given you his Holy Spirit. When you say, Jesus, this business, I decree and declare it to open. Mm -hmm. Believe. Then he said, whatever you say, Mark 11, 22, 23, 24, whatever you say, if you believe in your heart, you will have whatever you say. You will have whatever you say. Speak. Christianity is a ministry of confession. When that thing comes into your mind, the devil blows something in your mind, decree and decree and cast the root of that and put back the word of God. You walk in victory. You are not now going to get victory to raise your children. You are already in victory. Jesus has sat down at the right hand side till all his enemies become his footstool. May you raise your children in the name of Jesus Christ. May you proudly be called a mom. If you are on this conference, in this mm -hmm. conference, and you don't have a child, do not fear. If you have been looking for it, a year by this time, I decree, a year by this time, you will have a child. Mm -hmm. A year, if you don't have it, a year, if you have had, and it is not coming anymore, you want more, I take in the name of Jesus, that a year by this time, you will have, a child. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There's nothing that comes with the name Amen. of Jesus that will return Amen. to God. Lord. It shall Amen. accomplish the purpose by which it has been sent. And it shall prosper in that Amen. which it has been sent to accomplish. I say a year by this time. If you are Amen. looking for a child, Amen. you will have it in Amen. Jesus' name. No Amen. demon from hell can stop you. Amen. No, no jinx, no cat, no voodoo, Amen. no fire, no fetish, no marine spirit, no alcohol. He no Sunday can stop you. I say a year by this time, Amen. You, Amen. you will you have, Lord. if you are sick in the body, if you are sick, it doesn't matter how many times they pray for you. It doesn't matter how many times you have gone to the hospital. I said today, I cast the root of that disease. I cast the root of that infirmity. I cast the root of that illness. I command it to die and win the land of In Jesus' name. Amen. In the healing that Jesus fighting for you with his strength. By his strength, you are healed. In Jesus' name. And I cleanse your path. With the blood of Jesus, no Amen. disease will Amen. find its way to you. In yes, Jesus' Lord. name. Amen. And you in turn will begin to minister healing to people. Amen. And in, Jesus, in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever is between you and your husband. Whatever conflict, whatever misunderstanding, whatever financial difficulty, Today, in the name of Jesus, I stand with the heavens in the name of Jesus. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, I command there to be victory in the situation. In Amen. the name of Jesus, victory. Amen. In the name of Jesus, victory. In Amen. Jesus' name. May your marriage be sweet. May your marriage be prepared by the fire of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In Jesus' name, Amen. may the Lord give you a humble heart.
Amen. To be able to apologize to your husband. Amen. Go and apologize to your husband. Amen. Do not feel me. Go and apologize to your husband. Amen. And the Lord is saying, he will make wonder signs and miracles. Follow the apology. In Amen. Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, power belongs to you. Power belongs to you. You are the only name that is above every name. And everything that exalts itself above the Lord Jesus Christ and the wisdom everything that exhausts is about the wisdom and knowledge of Jesus Christ. Today, in the lives of all moms, we command you to bow, cease, and desist. In the Amen. name of Jesus, Amen. the greatest miracle that has ever happened to us is the salvation of our souls. Father, we want to thank you for our salvation. We want to thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ. We want to thank you for his name. We want to thank you for his worship, his kingship, his priesthood. We thank you for the Holy Spirit. We thank you above all for your word. That's as quick and sharper than any two edged sword. Father, we want to thank you. Today, we stand in one accord. And everything that opposes us, Every one of us in this conference, by our names, by our faces, even our loved ones and those we represent, today, Satan, listen to us. Today, in the name of Jesus Christ, we command you to bow and take your essence in Jesus' name. Whatever mm -hmm. you were sitting on today, we dethrone you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, we declare that we will never fear you from today. Amen. We will walk in the victory of the cross and we are going to be on the offensive by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we want to thank you for this, mother. Father, I bless our children. I will bless our grandchildren that goodness and mercy mm. who are angels who follow them all the days mm. of their life truth and grace will follow them all the days mm. of their lives father they are going in and they are coming in they shall be blessed they are lying there and they are rising up they shall be blessed wherever they step shall be blessed whatever they touch shall be blessed father their names will not be taken by wicked tongue. Every tongue that rises up against our children, in the name of Jesus, according to Isaiah 54, 17, we condemn. Father, mm. our children and our grandchildren shall not be judged by mm. any demons, by any agents of the devil. They will not be judged by witches and wizards. Today, mm. we decree and declare mm. that they shall not prosper against them. The in the Jesus. name of Jesus, name Father, of we Jesus. thank you for giving mm -hmm. us victory 2,000 years ago and quickening our spirit today to know that victory still belongs to us. We want to thank mm -hmm. you. We want to bless you that we have overcome the evil one. First John 2, 14. We want to thank you and bless you in Jesus' name. So today, what I tell you is that raise your children in the way of the law, 21st century or not. You are a special person, a royal priesthood. You have been called out of darkness, out of the world, into the marvelous light of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have passed from death to life. You have passed from darkness to light. Live in the light and you will not see darkness. God bless you and God keep you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God bless you so much, mommy. I believe that some of us have questions to ask, but I want to take um, advantage of the atmosphere right now. And I want you to pray. If we've heard a lot, there is nothing like the word of God 
There is no idea, there is no strategy that is better than the strategies in the word of God. And we thank God so much for the highlights. We thank God for a um, mommy who has pointed out the things in the scripture. You know, we can hear the ideas of ma the, the ideas of the world that do this to your children, talk to them this way, but it will not surpass or be better than what the word of God says. Mm to take what you have heard today and we want to pray and ask God to change our hearts. God should change our hearts. I want you to open your mouth right now. If you do not have children, I want you to pray into the future or even with the children that God has, has given to you right now, I want you to pray into their life that God will help you. If in any way you have fallen short of that standard of raising your children according to God's word, I want you to help you in the name of Jesus. He will help you to be able to teach them and according to the standards of, of God's word and not according to the standards of the world, not according to the challenges that we are facing in this world in the name of Jesus. Please, in Jesus. And if you want to pray in the name of Jesus, Father, oh God, we thank you, Lord. We are so grateful, Lord. We thank you for your word this afternoon and this evening. We are so grateful that, Father, your word has so much power, Lord, to change us, to transform us, to help us, oh God, to be excellent. Lord, today, oh God, as mothers, Lord, as fathers, Lord, as parents, in one way or the other, biological or not, Lord, we pray, in, oh God, that, Father, oh God, in any way, the Lord, we fall short in any way, Lord Jesus. We have not been the best in this work that you have given to us. In any way, Lord, we have not used the talent, oh God, that you have entrusted to us. Lord, in any way, we have not been faithful stewards. Lord, forgive us in the name of Jesus. We are praying, oh God, that Lord, oh God, your strength will be with us, Lord. May your spirit empower us, oh God. May your spirit empower us, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, oh God, more than ever, Lord. How we do go to do great things for you. In the name of Jesus, we are praying. In the name of Jesus, 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 in the name of Jesus we pray, O oh God, we have received the Lord today. Father, may we continue to walk in it. Lord, O oh God, may we, O oh God, be able to overcome every barrier in the name of Jesus. Amen. pillar, O oh God, that is not from you, that's already been established, O oh God, in the lives of our children, Father. We break it in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we pray, oh God, for favor. We pray, oh God, Father, may they have ears that ear, Lord Jesus. May they, oh God, have that respect, oh God, for what we teach them, Father. And may they, oh God, listen and grow, oh God, even those who are already grown, those who are already influenced, oh God, by the world. Father, we are praying, oh God, Father, may you deliver them, may you deliver them. Those whose ideas, oh God, have already been influenced, oh God, by the ideas of this world. We pray in, oh God. Father, may you deliver them, oh God. May your word take over their hearts their lives in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus. Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We thank you, oh God. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you so much. God bless you, mommy. Um, we to just have a short time. If you have time, I don't mind. Yes, 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 please. So we want to take um, some questions. Please, if you can actually unmute yourself and talk, you can raise your hand by using the reaction um, icon down here. And then I'll call you to talk. If you can, you can also type in your question and then I'll read it out so that mommy can answer for us. Any question at all? Okay, so um, let me set the ball rolling. <laughs> mommy, please, you mentioned something about um, apologizing to your, your, your kids. Yes. When, when there's a need to um, and you know sometimes especially for the younger ones sometimes they might not really understand your actions 
maybe they do something wrong and then you you speak to them that why did you do like you rebuke them they can actually go maybe get sad and then come and say tell me sorry you know they will actually ask for you to apologize to them <laughs> I, I have a a three-year-old, four-year-old son who usually does that. He does something, you talk to him, he gets sad about it, goes and comes back and asks that, tell me sorry for talking to me that way, you know. So how can you actually help them to understand um, times that they need to be apologized to and times that they actually don't need any apology? Yeah, thank you for that question. It's very interesting. It happens, I think, to every mother. When they are wrong, insist, be firm and say no. If you are right, mommy will always say sorry. But this is wrong because of this, 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 and that. You are wrong. I'm not going to say sorry. You are wrong because they are very smart. They are trying to, it's a, a, a play that they do. They mm. want to gain a territory in their own uh, 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 arena. So if they are wrong, insist you were wrong. If they are getting to be, they say, no, you are wrong. Let's change your tune and let them know, seriously, they are wrong and you are not going to tolerate it in love. But change your tune, let them know, let them know when you, you mean it. You know, when they are so sweet, three years, oh, we are in love. Oh, they can't do anything wrong. But if you don't start from early age, it goes on and goes on. I remember one child I was counseling was about 10 years. He so said, my mommy, she would never tell me no. She would tell me no one day, two days, three days. But he all, she always give in. And sometimes I wish she wouldn't give in. That's what a 10 year old wow. girl told me. She said, I wish she wouldn't give in. She always gives in. So I think that when it's wrong, it's wrong. Remember, you are a steward for Jesus Christ. This is serious, a ministry. Some of us think because we are not standing in the pulpit, we are not talking from here to here, have platforms. So we are not, We are all in ministry. As soon as you come to the Lord, you are in ministry. You have to show the way of the Lord. And you know, in bringing this, your, your son, if he's wrong, he's wrong. I'm not going, mommy is not going to say sorry. You're wrong. That was very bad. And never do that again. If you do that, mommy will give you on your, yeah, or time out. You, 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 you are raising somebody for Jesus. Eventually they become strong men. Hallelujah. So I mm. think you should remain for when they are wrong. Mm. When they are right, you should humble yourself and say, okay, okay, this one, mommy was strong, I'm sorry. But it's not, <laughs> you don't give in when they are wrong. No, mm. they know they are wrong. They know, mm. three years, he knows. Most. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much, Mommy, for the response. Uh, we have another question here. It says, How do we balance going out to make for the family and making time to raise our children? That is a good question. That is so good. You know what? You know how, I'm not saying go and do that. Wait upon the Lord and let the Lord lead you. It depends on who, whatever everybody, but you know some people, they go to school, some become doctors, lawyers, especially my church Pentecost. We have a lot of professionals who have left their profession to follow Jesus, be in full time. It's not that the church, the pastors are enjoying small, small. Pastors have suffered in the 60s, 70s, even late 80s. It's not that the pastors are enjoying, they left to come and follow Jesus. So can we also live? If we are staying in the same lane, as I'm saying, it's a ministry, it's a calling. 
can we leave certain things to focus on our future, our children, so that we can raise them? Take yourself as if you are pastor of your home. Are you raising that sheep? Are you raising them the way God wants you to raise them? Are you willing to sacrifice something? To, I remember my husband, um, he said, the children have got school for them. They have been filed for, they are entitled to become citizens. Can you follow them to America? I don't want them to just go there without a guardian. A lot of times there's no good report when you don't really, really have trustworthy people to leave your children. So he uprooted me from Ghana to follow my children. They had just finished their, uh, their high school. Uh, two of them came to high school here so that I will be a guardian and mother to them. He sacrificed his breakfast, his lunch, his dinner, his romance. That man sacrificed. So honey, I see they are very important. So this man was doing all that for me. Why is he now? He's gone to heaven. He's not here even for the children to have grown and start working and say, Daddy, this is a car. This is this for you. This is he's gone. Who is benefiting now? By the grace of God, they after one year of celebrating my husband's and this, they came and took me, mommy come and stay with us small. I'm benefiting, they buy food for me. They do this, they do this, they're taking care of me, you see. So that sacrifice, my husband, he sacrificed. People even were saying, hey, Auntie Emma and uh, Daddy and Pons, I think they've divorced. No, where is she? She has left and Daddy was going through something. So I've run away, <laughs> I've run away and left him, you know? So sacrifice. Forget about what people will say. Forget about what people will say. Are you willing to sacrifice to raise your children the way they should go? So what I will say to that question is that you can't be working, leaving 6 a.m. You come back 12 midnight, 6 a.m., 12 midnight, 6 a.m., 12 midnight, Saturdays, you have church program. And also quite a late. Then Sunday, the children, no, 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 no. You and your spouse pray about it. Find a way because your future is your children. And the other way you will you will present before God on that day. Your husband has to show you and your children to God that day. I, will you be able, the way you are going, will you be able to boldly stand before the Lord that this is the work I did? So it is unto you, pray about it. If, you, if it's your own business, my, dad, my husband was able to do it because he ran his own company. But maybe you are working for somebody. You and your wife can, if the children are to can one stay home and do a shop or do something, and uh, till they grow, you know, I know here most of the time when their children have grown, then they take career. Those who don't want career, they're the feminists who don't really even care about women already. But if they have children, those who are really uh, 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 Christian, they care about their children, how they raise their children. So it is difficult, but you have to be able to um, decide how you want to raise your children. Thank you very much, Mommy, for, for that, that response. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you have to pass it, certain it, things. The children are very important to you. You are not taking the job to heaven <laughs> by your children, definitely. There's nothing that is worth more than the soul of a man. That's the currency in heaven. When we get to heaven, the many souls we've won, that's the currency. How many currency do you have in heaven? Hmm. If you can't even convert your own children, 
your husband, if your husband is not born again yet. My husband came to the lady and said, this is, woman is my, is my wife. I've seen how she has changed. Mm -hmm. So she came to the, came to the Lord. So wow. that is it. Jesus Powerful. Christ in everything. Yeah. Powerful. God bless you, mommy. Please, we have another question here. Um, and it reads, I am raising my children strictly in the Lord. And I get a lot of attacks from even Christians that I'm overdoing it. Their advice to me is to expose their children to the things of the world also, so that when they grow, they don't feel like they've missed out. But the Bible says to raise your children in the way they should go. And... I mean, so um, you, uh, um, um, in the way, uh -huh. and they won't depart from it. Please, what do you advise concerning this? Thank you. They used to call me fanatic. Even in fact, I've heard one of my sons when he grew up he say I was fanatic. You know, but none of my children, by the grace of God. Say it's on drugs yeah, or... or US and Canada. I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So he should do what the Bible says he should do. He should do what the Bible says he should do. He's not saying he won't let his children go to the grocery shop. He's not saying he won't let the children go to the games. He's not saying he's not letting his children talk to a non-believer. He's not saying he's making his own school. He won't let the children go to the school. He, his, his children will go to the school, but there will be the beacon of light there. Mm. When my children came to America, wherever they got jobs, their bosses were looking for me to say thank you. I'm telling you the truth. They said, you were raised well. Wow, your mother mm. did a good job. Your father did a good job in America. Mm. My daughter, Sarah, said the first time she went to the high school, she used to, uh, a teacher was talking to a student in her class. The, the way the girl slapped the teacher, her, she said she wanted her to faint. She had never seen anything like that in her life. When I started, who can you? And this one, she's rather beating the teacher. You know, do we want that type of thing that because we are, we are, no, 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 no. We, we are not saying we hate the world. In fact, we have to bring the world to us. We shouldn't forget that we are not the only generational. Peter, Paul, Mark, John, all of them in their generation, if they had thrown up their hand, we wouldn't be having the gospel now. So they should train the children the way and let them wait and see the difference when they have all grown up. My children had worldly friends. See the difference when they have grown up and then let them come and tell him he, he was a fanatic. You will see the difference. He should do what the Bible says he should do. He should not listen to even a Christian. Why would a Christian even condemn another Christian because I hope he's not slap, slapping the children, kicking them and shouting on them. But he's, if you are beating your child, kicking them, slapping on them, being hard, that's not what it is. In love, bring them the way of the Lord in love. Christ is love. Be their friend, but their parent. Be firm, but in love. But if you are slapping them, maybe they sit in the church, children, they want to roam a little bit, pop up. No, that's not what we are talking about. So I don't know how he's doing, she's doing hers and that, but everything should be done in love. And when things are done in love, you can't get it wrong. God bless you, mommy. So everything should be done in love. <laughs> okay. So Mommy, please, we have another question. I want to read it quickly. It says, um, where there are differences in child bringing, example, you tell the child off and the father doesn't think you should have done that. How can the two of you, mother and father, 
discipline the children in unison so that both of you present a united front to the children. That thing is very, very, very bad. My children will tell you that you can never win over mommy. Whether my husband is there or not, they know my husband is on my side. They always say, mommy and daddy, there are some bunch of, you can never win with mommy. If I say no, it's no. If I didn't say no, it's no. You should have a meeting. That person should have a meeting with her husband and they should discuss. The minute they do that, they have failed. If, 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 if they are not having support of each other, they have failed from the beginning. It's not going to end well because the children are very smart. They know what to tell mommy and ask for mommy and they know what to tell daddy and ask for daddy. It's no, no. That's one thing. No, 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 no. Can two, two, can two work together except they be in agreement? No, 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 no. So they should have a meeting and develop a strategy where they would, even if they don't agree, in front of their children, they will have one front. When they get inside, the other one can tell the other one what he think and what he think they should take it, you know? But you cannot disagree in front of their children. It makes you people low. It makes you, uh, you, you lose your respect. It's not good for the man or for the woman. The man might think I'm the man. No, no, no. One day your, your children will do it to you. Your children will talk back to you. When they are 18, 19, 20, though, that you get away by you, they will, that's when they talk back and tell you what they think of you. They should not do that. So the lady should see that her husband sit and have a strategy that no matter how wrong one of them is in front of the children, they will always have one point. God bless you so much, Mommy, for that advice. Um, I don't know if this is the last question, but if anyone has a question, and we can still have the question and read it out. So, Mom, please, you spoke about um, balancing your secular work with raising your kids. How yeah. about um, striking a balance between ministry work and raising your kids? Because a lot of times we see people very, very busy with ministry work and they miss out on spending time with their kids. So how can we do that as parents? When it comes to full-time ministry, you know, sometimes we get it a little bit wrong. If you are single, that's why when you are single, that's the time to go all out and do everything you want to do because as soon as you get married, it's different than when the children start coming different. You must balance your ministry. You see, people think going to church, doing this, doing this, that stuff. It's what is your one-on-one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ? I believe that some people, they are so busy that they don't even have a quiet time with Jesus. I sincerely, I'm beginning to believe that. That when they get out, they just put on their clothes, they are gone. Yeah, yeah. I don't think, do you even have one hour a day with Jesus? Do you even pray in tongues one hour a day? We have 24 hours in a day. How many hours? How many do you give to Jesus? They don't do that. They think, that, then they go here, then they go here, then they go here. Then they, every program, they are there, everything, they are there, and they think they are serving the Lord. And don't, God is even talking to you. You are not hearing because you are busy. So what you should do is your relationship with Jesus is the most important. If you have a uh, real, really good, tight bond with Jesus. It is the highest. Then, if you are married, it's your wife. If you are man, it's your husband. Second, if you have children, your children third. The church activity and going out is is the fourth. It's 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 far far behind it. So you can't be going up and down. Then you're, you don't care about your relationship with Jesus one-on-one. -on -one. You don't have any uh, 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 morning devotions, 
even night devotion, you don't have anything. You don't tell Jesus, good morning. How are you, Lord? I love you. Thank you. I appreciate you. You don't worship him. You don't, you don't talk to the Holy Spirit. You don't speak in tongues. You are gone. You can't do that. It's your relationship, not church. It's your relationship, one-on-one, -on -one with Jesus is number one. Then your wife or your husband is number two. Your children, number three. Church activities, number four. We had a lady, my mommy, Mama Eunice Addison. She, I invited her to Aglo when I was president. She came and shared, she said that she, she used to go to church activity, but she will never go when she has not had a time with Jesus, serve her husband, she will cook all her food weekends. This is for breakfast, this is for lunch, this is for dinner. She makes sure the husband is eating breakfast, then she goes. She will come back quick for lunch. Then dinner, she is there. She did not leave the husband to, because she's following Jesus for other people to take care of. So I think that, you know, even in our Church of Pentecost, I think they give our pastors one day in a week or something like that to rest, to rest. And then to, the, the good thing about it, they don't leave their children because uh, they are in all mission house. They go with their children, they come with their children, they sleep with their children, they pray with their children. So, but if you are working, and you are working, you have a wife, you have children, you want to do ministry too. You have to really balance it, put your priorities right. And know that Jesus is your number one, not because Jesus is your number one outside. Jesus is your number one in your closet. Your, when you have closed the door behind you, you and Jesus, that's number one, your wife or your husband, then your children. And then if you have spare time, you do something for the Lord in the ministry. Amen. God bless you so much, mommy. I'm, I'm very grateful that you've actually shared this order and I believe that everybody paid attention. We should never make the mistake of mixing it up, prioritizing our ministry or maybe um, our work over our family. First of all, your relationship with God Secondly, your marriage, third, your parenting, before ministry, and then maybe your secular career. God bless you so much, mommy. I think we'll, we'll just take the last question because of time. The question reads that, mommy, please, which stage would you say is the most critical in the raising of children? There comes a time where our children are physically absent in our lives. Example, when they leave for college, how do we help them in those critical times of their lives? Thank you. That's why the Bible says we should train them the way they should go. That's what I'm saying, like the three-year-old. You see, when you say, mommy is right, you are wrong. Let's tell me something. Mommy is right, you are wrong. Then you shower them with love. Let your children never hide your, some men, in the women, because we breastfeed, we are able to bond and the children know we love them. It's a few, few mothers are not, you know, but most mothers. You should, man, your husbands should be able to boldly love the children. If you have to kiss your child on the cheek, do it. Love them, tell them you love them. Your girls, your boys. So when they leave the home, they know my mother, my father loves me. They think a world of me. They trust me. Let them just allow your children to trust you. If they tell you something, don't tell your friends. If they tell you something, sometimes they don't even want their father to hear. It's not a sin. Mother and daughter. If it's not going to destroy her life, you can keep it your little secret. If it's something that is going to hurt her, then of course you ask her permission. You told me, you know, but I think we have to tell that because daddy can help. 
let them feel free to come to you at any time. Because what happens is when they go to college, they are mixing up with these people whose parents were executives. They never had time for them. They never told, some people's parents have never told them, I love you, never. They've never had a hug. They, and some people, they are, there's a white guy who was saying that they give him everything, it's a white guy. They give him everything, the latest car. If she wants to change his car every year, the parents will do it. He has bodyguards, he has this, but he doesn't know his parents. He doesn't have that, so he has become an addict. So it's not money. It's nothing that you can give your children apart from love. Love them. Love them like Jesus has loved you. Jesus gave us his all. Nothing left of him. Love your children and don't keep it. Tell them, I love you. Call them. Call them. WhatsApp them. Facebook them. Maybe FaceTime them. Call them. I love you. How are you? How is it going? Then you should be able to call them at any time. Let them know you are, you are their best friend on this planet. And they should not be afraid to tell you anything. You will never judge them. If you put this in them, when they go to the college, they go to university, they will see people and they will know from their back, oh, their parents were not there for them. Then my children, their friends, most of them are jealous. Because their parents are divorced. This is going on. That is going on. That is going on. But your parents are together no matter what. Hey, they, they, they see that it is something. It's an achievement. So you do what the Lord is teaching you to do and leave the rest to the Lord. They will never depart from it. They will have challenges. But I'm telling you, the word of God is spirit and it's life. It's a seed. And you know, seed doesn't die. It's incorruptible seed. It will not die. It, they will survive. They will survive. Even though they go through uh, challenges, they will survive. And you will know that you have done the job God gave you to do. Just do it prayerfully. Do it in humility. Do it with love. Do it knowing that you have a master who is looking down upon you to raise this child in his name for him, for the kingdom. And he will never disappoint you. Those that trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. They shall not be removed. They shall abide forever. As the mountain surrounds Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, even now and forevermore. The rod of the righteous will not rest upon the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous put for their hand into iniquity. Your, your, the rod of wickedness, even in the college, in the university, will not rest upon your child, lest she put his hand to iniquity. And to the Lord, you do your own. Do what God has asked you to do and leave the rest to him. God bless you. Amen. God bless you so much, Mumi. We wish we could end here, but I have just one last question and um it's actually not a question so i think we can... the question is not answered well they can still go back for if they want detail or something okay so it's read that as a woman of god a wife and a mother is your first ministry your family or the lord i think you made a comment about this and it also says sometimes the children demand so much attention that you feel guilty as a woman of God. So what, what would be your advice on that, mommy? Uh, th th she didn't uh, explain it well. The, the, are they demanding so much because you are not there in their life and going up and down in ministry or they are uh, complaining because of what? I, th mm -hmm. I don't know. The question wasn't complete because if we get a quick answer, um, you can send a direct message right now so that I read it out. I think she she will respond quickly. So. If she's going leaving them home and going every day, of course, they will demand 
uh, for her to be there for them. I mean, we don't see, you are always going up. My children, I, I, I remember they used to complain. When we went to church and we closed, then good morning, good morning, talking to everybody. Mommy, let's go home. That day, they, we are tired. We will, after church, we will greet and talk for one hour. <laughs> so they, they didn't like that very much. They didn't appreciate that. We come to church, let's go home. So I don't know whether she leaves them and goes out uh, she comes anytime she likes. That is not good. Okay, I've, I've still not heard from her. So maybe we can just proceed. In case she responds, I would alert all of us. Okay, so we thank God so much for this wonderful time. Mommy, God bless you so much. We are really blessed to have you here today. God richly bless you. We want to take some time and pray into the life of our mom. Um, I want you to pronounce blessings upon her life. In the name of Jesus, we want to pray that the Lord will continue to enrich her and keep her and even use her more, impact her generation and the generation, our generation, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord. We are so grateful, Father, for the life of your daughter. Thank you, oh God, for everything that you have taught her every experience that she has had. And Lord, thank you, O oh God, that Father, you are using her to impact our lives. We pray, O oh God, that you will continue to bless her, Father. May your peace around her, Father, may you strengthen her and give her even more strength to do more to the glory of your name. We are so grateful, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless you, Mama. Please, before I, before I release, I think she has responded, so I'll uh -huh. read through and then we'll take the announcement. Um, she says sometimes she gets guilty for not spending alone time with the Lord because she's spending time with your children. And she says, especially when you have little ones, it's hard to go and spend time alone praying. I find myself constantly fighting for prayer time. So that, that's it. I have a, I have a daughter in law. I have a daughter in law. She goes in with her children. You, I mean, you, uh, you, she goes in with her children and they know when it's prayer time. So they too, they try to do like they are praying some. So she should, God knows your heart. It's not a long, long something. You go in, you say, mommy, stop. You know, everything is teaching. They are smart, oh. These children, go, um, mommy, it's time to pray. Mommy is going to talk to Jesus. Let's go. By the time you realize, by the time you finish, they are asleep. So go in with them. Start praying, talking to your Lord. If you are very busy, maybe you can only do it for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, even 10 minutes. If you are, God knows. You pray, let's go. You are teaching them, but then you'll be there one day, mommy, let's go and talk to Jesus. I mean, teach them. So you go and you, you can't, Jesus didn't say you can't bring your children inside when you're going to talk to them. Prayer is talking to God. It's not a mystic something. And again, you can have prayer all day when God says, Pray with us, season. It's about praying in the spirit. As you are cooking, shinde, kiraba, sande, reba. As you are cooking, as you are doing the laundry, as you are doing what? Everything you are praying in the spirit. You can do that. So it's not a difficult thing. She must go in her prayer closet with the children and say, We are going to talk to the man who wants to talk to Jesus. And then they won't worry her. They may be beginning to be something. By the time she read, they'll be used to it. They'll be sleeping while she's praying. So I think it's possible. It's possible. Amen. It is possible. God bless you so much, Mommy, for the encouraging words. We want to say thank you so much. And we will really love to even have you another time. So we are praying that God will bless us with 
such opportunity. God bless you so much, Mama. And thank you for inviting me. God bless you. I appreciate mm. it. Amen. God bless you. Okay. So at this moment, we'll have our announcement from Sister Vicentia. We thank the Lord so much for a beautiful today. So on behalf Okay, thank you so much, Mommy, for having us. So on behalf of um, the coordinating team, I'd like to welcome all ex-evangelical ladies and our guests to our first conference for the month of May. Today, we have focused on the cost of parenting, ideas for the 21st century mom. And we have had Dickness Mrs. Amasewa Amponsa speaking to us. Mommy, on behalf of ex evangelical ladies and our guests, I want to say a very big thank you to you for making time to come and share ideas with us. And we want to also take this opportunity to wish you a happy, happy, happy Mother's Day in advance. God richly bless you. And, and we know that God will actually use you as a big blessing to this movement. Mm -hmm. Laying at the Biotechnology Center at, um, at the University of Ghana, um, if you are interested, you can actually, um, if you are interested, you can actually send us a private chat if you are new on the call so that we will send you the details or the Google location so that you can easily come. You may also join us on this same call and we know that God will surely bless you. Next week, because it's Mother's Day, we are not meeting at all. We will not meet. However, we'll be meeting on the May 16th and we'll be focusing on relationship. Specifically, we will discuss the team relationships in perspective and we look at every relationship that you can think of from our Jesus and our Master Savior's perspective. And to lead us in this discussion will be Dr. Newman Atta. Let's invite other people to join us um, on the call. And then also on the, on the 23rd of May, as usual, it's going to be an exciting time on this particular call. We will be having our discipleship conference. Hooray, I thought you will be happy to shout. As for this month, we are going to receive an exposition titled, Declare the Glory of God Among the Nations. How to declare the glory of God among the nations. And we are going to focus on, on ritual groups, specifically the, in the Islamic world, Indonesia, Pakistan, and all the original groups who are actually Muslim, we are going to explore how we can actually make ourselves all things to them so that we can win some more for Jesus Christ. On that note, um, um, and that will be um, the last for the month of May. That will be the last for the month of May. God bless you so much. Um, Ex-Evangelical Ladies Mission helps the ladies called to be matured in Jesus Christ and equips us to fulfill our potential as excellent evangelicals and effective disciples. And since its inception, we have seen a vast transgenerational movement of trained ex -evangel excellent evangelicals declaring the glory of God among the nations in federance to God's salvific mission plan by the power of the Holy Spirit. We want to invite you, especially our first timers, to join us. If you identify with the mission and the vision of ex evangelical ladies, I want to encourage you to join us. And I know that you would surely be blessed. Ex evangelical ladies, we are committed to discipleship and disciple making. In view of that, if you are on the call and you want to be taught actively how to make disciples, grow people into maturity, you also want to send us a private chat. And um, you want to send any of the hosts a private chat, or you can send us an email via beautyforhisglory at gmail.com. 
or you can actually um, WhatsApp past any of the contacts that we have shared in the chat and surely uh, we would contact you and assign you so that you can also be discipled. God richly, richly bless you and have a very, very fruitful week. Because of our time, we'll not be able to give our first timers the opportunity to introduce themselves. But we want to say that we appreciate your coming. God bless you so much. God bless you and bless you. Thank you. I'll hand over to um, our sister Ruda um, to pick up from there. Amen. God bless you so much, Sister Vicentia. Um, we've noted all the announcements. At this moment, we want to call on Sister Christine Nove to um, lead us to the closing prayer, and then we'll take the benediction. Amen. Can we have Sister Christine taking us to the closing prayer? Or Sister Blezel Ajabu? Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. We thank you. We bless you so much for how good you've been to us. We thank you for an opportunity to come into your presence, to experience a time with you. We've learned deep things, Lord, that you've entrusted into our hands, talent to take care. That is our children. We will give account to it, Lord. Help us live with this consciousness in Jesus' mighty name throughout our land that we excel at it. That will give a faithful account to you on the day of reckoning. Father, the week is in your hands. We commit every member into your hands. Continue to keep and sustain us. Any plan of the enemy against our lives shall never materialize. Help us walk in your will. Help us walk in good health and excellence of life. We commit our speaker in your hands. Continue to be her strength and her pillar. And continue to use her to bless generations, Lord. We bless you. We honor you. Father, we pray that even in our next meeting, take care, take charge, Lord, and continue to bring many people to come and learn deep things in you. We thank you. We bless you. We know that even the things we've not asked for, you know the deepest intents of our hearts, and you've done it for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Shall we please have the benediction, the grace, the grace of our Lord, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Amen. God, amen. God bless you so much for making time to join in. Bye-bye.